The faithful one is the one that turns to Jesus. The faithful one is the one that approaches Jesus and asks Jesus for what he needs. This is what I think Jesus is getting at when he tells the disciples that this sort of miracle can only occur through prayer. You see, what the Father does is pray. I don't think it's a stretch to recognize that little, short, seemingly contradictory statement as a prayer. I find myself praying it all the time. I'm not there, Lord. I'm weak. I'm frail. I I have a little, but I need more. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. And it's that prayer that makes everything possible. So again, this story, it contains it, but it really isn't about the healing or the restoration of this boy. That happens, to be sure. But it's not the main thing that Mark is trying to communicate here. This is a story about faith, about believing Jesus, and about turning to Jesus in our need. The Father gets it. He knows where he stands with a little bit of faith, but not nearly enough to do anything on his own. He's also just seen what no faith will accomplish, what trying to do things on our own will accomplish. Nothing. So the Father knows what is needed. He knows where he needs to turn to Jesus. And I think that is what this story is about. It's about us recognizing ourselves in the Father, recognizing about our, our own inadequacy, our own inability, and then turning to the infinite ability of Jesus. All things are possible, but all things are only possible through Jesus. And so if we want to see all things happen, we have to turn to the one who can accomplish those things. We have to have faith in Jesus, even small faith. Mark doesn't use the word, but Matthew does. He describes faith as a mustard seed. Even that is enough. And to be clear, this faith is not so that we can get what we want. Faith is not a formula that we can apply to have our desires realized. It's not what Jesus means when he says all things can be done for the one who believes. The faith The faith that is trusting Jesus is a faith that trusts Jesus. Trusts that Jesus knows best what can and should be done in saying whatever you want, Jesus. It's faith that surrenders the will and allows the Father to lead. The previous story, the top part of this picture is a revelation, a revealing of the true glory of Jesus. But there's something of a revelation in this story as well. It's a revelation that's found in what we are called to as the followers of Jesus, a revealing of the path in front of us, if you will. We are not called so that we can perform miracles. We are not called so that we can cast out demons. We are not called to run the show. That is not what our relationship with Jesus is about, about accessing and appropriating divine power so that we can get at what we want out of life. Healing and restoration do happen. It's an important part of being who we are as the people of God, but they happen because of Jesus, not because of what we bring to the party. The failure of the disciples, that is a, a, it's not a failure of power. It's not a failure of technique. It's a failure of faith. It was a failure to look to Jesus, to trust that Jesus both can and will do what is right. It was a failure to submit to the will of the Father, which is exactly what Jesus was doing all along. And the story tells us something else. That while surrendering to the will of the Father and believing in Jesus, trusting Jesus, having faith, seems like a big thing, it actually isn't. It's easy. 
and simple and a little step. It only takes a mustard seed of faith. Just a little. And then a willingness to allow Jesus to make up the deficit. All it takes is for us to pray that powerful prayer, the one that seems weak, but isn't. Lord, we believe. Help our unbelief. Let's pray that together. If you join me. Lord, we come to you in this moment recognizing our fallibility, our weakness, the unbelief that each of us is plagued with. But Lord, we also come with that mustard seed of faith, that little kernel, that little nugget that that has the potential to grow into something bigger. Lord, we believe and we trust and we know that you are the source of all good things And yet there's part of us that struggles. Lord, we are thankful that you don't turn us away because of that struggle, but you invite us into deeper relationship and deeper faith. Help us not to rely on our own strength and our own understanding, but to turn to you, to recognize in you the source of all good things to recognize that you make everything possible through your power and your strength. Lord, where we are weak, you are strong. Help us to live in that truth and to trust you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Let's stand and sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. bow with me. Lord, we ask that you would bless your people, keep them safe, shelter them in the palm of your hand, encourage them, equip them, challenge them when they need to be challenged. We pray that you would guide us in the path of life, bring us into contact with those that need your love, and give us the courage to share it. We pray in Jesus' name, amen want to encourage you all to come up and take a look at the new quilts that were uh, displayed. It's the second tour of quilts. If you need the stories, they are back uh, in another flyer on the, on the table out front. You may go in peace.